bringing it to them all day. Bringing it to you always. always. Orange or black, we rebuild the pack. No matter where we at, you know we coming back. Section 336, we on this, so tune in. Tune in. You know what's up? Welcome to Birdland. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Birdland. You know what's up? Welcome to Birdland. Birdland. Now, here come the boys from Section 336. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Baltimore sports fans of all ages, welcome to Section 336, Next Generation of Baltimore Sports Talk. I am your endearingly Southern host, Matt Sroka. As always, I'm joined by the button lover, Josh Sroka. Hey, I was just noticing on the camera, you can tell that I'm sunburned, can't you? Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> look at those arms. It's definitely pink, and that is not the light in here. My arms are sunburned, but I got to see some baseball like in person, so it was well worth the sting in arms. Do you not believe in suntan lotion? Uh, I didn't think about it. Yesterday was February 28th. I didn't think about suntan lotion in February. I'm new to the Florida thing. Clearly. So, so clearly I was not prepared. I saw other people putting in suntan lotion, and it didn't click to me that I need to put on suntan lotion. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're burnt, but uh, it was it was for a good cause, and so all you coconuts out there are going to get a uh, inside sneak peek preview at the Orioles season as Josh was doing some scouting down there. Oh, I took uh, some notes. Yeah, Josh has some notes, so I'm going to let Josh handle the show today, um, as he actually has has the only person sitting here who's seen the Orioles in person, at least in the past uh, what year and a half or something. Yeah. When's the, when's the last time you were at an Orioles game? Oh, I don't know. Right. Going back. I mean, it has to be what September of 2019. Yeah. 2019. Isn't that crazy to think that it's been that long? Yeah. Even this, I was watching uh, the spring training game today on the Philadelphia station. And I, it felt like it's been a while since I've watched baseball. It felt, it felt like it's been a while. I know we had baseball last yeah. year, but the, I think the shortened season just felt different. It yes. didn't feel like that long baseball season where you get your baseball fill. And so it, it felt kind of weird watching spring training. Like I felt like I hadn't watched baseball in a while. Um, right. Like, like it's been a year since I've watched baseball kind of felt <laughs> like it, 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 you're right. hundred percent. Correct. I, so it, I went down, drove to Sarasota. I drove. I decided Saturday night to get a jump on the on the drive, and I drove down to Tampa Saturday night, and stayed in a hotel Saturday night, and then finished in the morning. Drove to Sarasota, went to the game, and then drove all the way home after the game. So I spent a lot of time on the road. So I made some phone calls and talked to some people, and I was talking to someone on the way home, and I said it didn't strike me how much I missed watching baseball in person. And that it's been like almost two years since I've gotten to do that. Yeah. And for you and I, it's something where it was almost a weekly thing for a while, especially during those really fun, good years. And even on the rough years, it's at least been every other week during baseball season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely easy. And, and, in 2019, I probably went to more games than I ever have going to my, my, minor league games with my son. Right. And I was watching today. I was watching spring training game, and my son sat on my lap and watched a little bit of, a little bit with us or with me. And we talked about going to games again the, 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 this year. Um, and he always – but it's been a really good excuse because he always says when all the germs go away. So then I can say, like, anything, Silas. I was like, you know what, Silas? I'm going to take you to the moon one day. And he says, when all the germs go away, yeah, when all the germs go away, we'll go to museums, we'll go to baseball games, we'll go, I'll take the Super Bowl, World Series, right. just when all the germs go away. Uh, you know, at some point, he's going to catch on. Yeah, the germs will go away at some point. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, there's science. Science is going to figure this out. But, um, but, but no, I, I'm, I'm pumped to go see the Orioles in person. Like, it, just watching in spring training made me, and seeing those fans, right. made me very jealous. Like, and uh, I'm excited to go see the regular season. I'm excited to go see yeah. my, my only games. Like, I'm pumped about this year. I think it was 2014 or 2015, one of those, where I went to 26 games in a season. Yeah. And that, when I did the math, I'm like, wait, if baseball was year-round, that would be every other week. So it's yeah. like I went from that many, going to that many baseball games, driving down to Camden Yards all the time, yeah. and not having it for so long was weird. And it was really nice 
to uh, be back in a stadium and watching live baseball. Yeah, it's true. I mean, there's part of me that would always complain because, yeah, at minimum, we would go to 13 games a year, but often we go to more. But And there was something about, like, having to leave work here on the Eastern Shore and, you know, getting to dad's house on time or going there myself and finding parking. Right. And then and then the games don't end till 10, and so you don't get home till after 11. And so it was part of me was like, oh, yeah, this is kind of a nice break, not having to make that drive, not having to stay out late and all that stuff. But yeah. But I'm ready for it all again. I was let, always, let me leave her cranky. Let, I want to go to bed late. I'm all for all of it. I was always jealous of the people that lived in the city that could just walk downtown, yeah, and yeah. go to three innings, and then leave. Yeah. Like I always felt like, well, yeah. I need to stay at least five innings because of my because of the drive. But it's like, so yeah. So I went there, and we had all the COVID restrictions and everything now. So I was wondering what it was going to be like. And one of the rules, your pod. Right, so I had a pod, and I'll get to that. But the first rule is you have to wear a mask the whole time. No big deal. I got, I got my Orioles mask right here. Nice. Just wore this the whole game. Yeah. No problem. I'm, I, I teach in a mask all day. Yeah. I get it's it. no yep. big deal. We're all it's used to masks. Life. Nobody cares. Even in Florida, people were fine with it. I didn't see anyone fight about the mask. Uh, other rule is no backpacks, and you can't bring in your own food. And okay. Those, those two rules surprised me. I don't see how that makes it safer for COVID. I think it does the opposite because now I'm waiting in line for food and stuff and people are preparing my food versus bringing a bag with my own stuff so I never leave my pod. But it's okay. So obnoxious. What? No, I, I, I go on Twitter uh, on Saturday and the first tweet I see oh, yeah, cause I was confused. is you complaining about it. Meanwhile, you get to go see the Orioles you know, when I haven't because- seen them. In over a year, and the, your first tweet is complaining about not being able to bring in your own peanut well, butter and jelly sandwich. That was, Who the that freak was cares? Because I prepared. I was all thinking. I was. I did. You don't bring in food to the stadium anyway. You're, that, that, that's not your 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 thing. You're gonna go get um, some stadium food, weren't you? You yeah, were anyway. This, yeah, but the stadium food at that same spring training sucks. Yeah, so it's not coming here. I planned to bring stuff in to be in my pod, but it worked okay. out okay because I needed to get out of my pod once in a while. Just to get a break out of the sun. The sun was killing me. Mm, you pod in the sun. So the pod, my pod was, I was on the third base side, uh, section 217, row three. So behind uh, the visitors dugout. So nice seats, great seats, great angle. And here's how the pod worked. Anyone who, they separated everyone throughout so you weren't sitting next to other people. Yeah. And, then they, and then they took zip ties and they zip tied seats that were not sold tickets. So that way people couldn't wander around and sit in other seats. So if I stuck all my, the seats that were not sold were zip tied. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if I stuck my arms out and, and the closest people to me also stuck their arms out, we would not even be within like two feet of each other. Okay. Plenty of space. Um, and, but, and which was nice. It was nice to not even have to worry about that. Not be within two feet or not be within six feet of each other? No. If my arms were all out and their <laughs> arms were all out, we would be, our arms would be – we wouldn't be able to touch each other. Oh, that seems a bit much. That seems a bit overkill. It was, it was further than six feet, definitely. Yeah. But it, whatever. If it makes people comfortable, it was great to see baseball in person. No, uh, no autographs, no interacting with the players, which is a bummer because that's a big part of spring training. It is. So that's gone. Um, what about um, – uh, were you there for batting practice? I did not get see bat. And, I did not see bat in practice. They opened up the gates an hour before game time. Okay, but I didn't go in until like thirty minutes before because okay. again, I knew there was no interaction, none of this, none of that. So. What, what What about a foul ball? Did you have multiple fans going after a foul ball, or were there rules against chasing foul balls? Uh, people weren't. I didn't see any chasing of foul balls in Sarasota. I once saw a guy leap over a. A little bar and break his arm chasing a uh, it was, chasing a it home was, run batting practice ball. It was a finger and it was during batting practice, <laughs> and they didn't open up the stadium early enough for people to see batting practice. Okay, way more subdued crowd. Oh, way, yeah, way sure. more older crowd. Way way more locals. But, I don't think many people traveled for this. Yes, and that's I'm sure that's true. Is going to be true throughout because of all the restrictions. It's less restrictions. travel appealing. Right, exactly, and and also just less tickets, so less chance to buy them. Remember, to get the ticket for the first game, I bought one of the five game like 
local packages. Right. Or like, And most people in Baltimore aren't going to buy a five-game plan. Right, right. And when we went, it's pretty easy to pick up, uh, you know, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's not – I believe the game – all the weekend games are sold out. I know that at least. Okay. Because um, I was able to take my other four games for the season and flip them on StubHub. So are you going to any other games or is this it for you? I don't know. I've got another ticket for March 28th. I've flipped the others. Uh, that, uh, that's one of the last ones, isn't it? I it's guess. one of the last ones. So I'm I'd probably not – because of the restrictions, one is probably enough for me. Okay. Um, and instead, I will sell that one too. And if the Orioles open and up put Camden it towards the plane I'll, ticket to go to, yeah, yeah I'll come Camden up Yards. to Camden Yards and see real baseball, right? Where it matters. But it was good. Um, it was fun. And I'll get to this because the big storyline of the game was Trey Mancini. Yes, yes. I was wondering because, because you know, I was asking Josh about his experience in spring training game. How long will it take Josh to talk about the actual Baltimore Orioles, the actual baseball team, as opposed to talking about pods and lunch boxes? Well, I didn't before this. I, I purposely didn't tell you anything about this because I wanted to share. Yeah, this all is about a, it on the podcast. I, this is the first time I'm hearing any of this. Yeah, yeah. I think you're on a group text where I texted a picture of Chris Davis just because that was the story of yeah. You'll, and we'll get to that. Because I kind of ignore that group text. That's really, I'm not liking what that's tur- turning into, but that's for another day. Really? I saw you doing a bunch of shtick on it the other day. Oh, that was just taking shots at you. I'll take shots at you all day on oh, there. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah. Well, we'll discuss that another day. Um, but the story was Trey Mancini. Oh, the absolutely. Whole time. And it was part of what was fun about this spring training game is the crowd was small. So you could overhear. What fan, other fans in how many people you think uh, a, a thousand people there? 1800. 1800, okay. 1800 people, which is like 20 percent, right? Which I was 1800 like, people sounds like a lot, but you put them in a big stadium, yeah, and it's like, yeah, it's nobody. But yeah. here's what it felt like it didn't feel like an empty stadium, it felt like September in Camden Yards in a crappy season, yeah, it felt like 10, 15, 20,000 in Camden Yards. Game two, yeah, right, yeah, right. April, yeah. yeah, yeah, whatever. The the first Monday game of the season. That's what it felt like. So it wasn't bad. I didn't mind it at all. It didn't feel like an empty stadium, but I think because of the subduedness, you could just hear everyone around you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Because yeah. the stadium is smaller than Camden Yards. So what was fun is hearing the pregame conversation about Trey Mancini, and I they listened to this old guy. A lot of pirate fans because I think. A lot of Pennsylvania people also retired down here. So pregame, this old guy is talking to this other old guy about Trey Mancini and explaining Trey Mancini and how he's the face of the organization. And but but he didn't say anything about Trey's baseball. He was saying, of course, the good storyline about Trey beating cancer and coming back. And he said, plus the Orioles have the had this young. Perky reporter, blonde perky reporter, and Trey is now dating the blonde perky reporter. So oh. for every so for everyone in Baltimore, it's as if the high school quarterback and the head cheerleader are now dating. That's cool. I did not know that that was like national news. That that's something I, I, everybody like. I knew it, but I didn't know everyone knew it. Yeah. Apparently, all apparently, old men are really into this. Oh, I, I could totally see that. I found it totally. I can too. Once I heard him talking about it, but it definitely made my notes of this is a weird conversation to overhear and a weird way to introduce Trey Mancini to uh, a pirate fan. Yeah, I mean, the, just to touch on Trey Mancini real quick, and it was just a cool moment to see everyone give him a stand ovation, even the pirates, class jack by by the pirates. And I mean, I, I went on ESPN that day on the ESPN app. And they have like the big story right when you open up the ESPN app and it was Trey Mancini and it was video of Trey Mancini yeah. getting a standing ovation. So it's good to see. I mean, we talked before how whenever there's Orioles news and Orioles coverage, it seems to always be negative. So this is great to see an Orioles positive story. Yeah. Um, and people gripe that 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 um, and it's, it's I think it's a fair gripe that Trey Mancini's first return to baseball. And Josh is the only one who can see it, right? Because it wasn't tele- televised, it, which yeah. which is well, – I think that's gripe-worthy, but it doesn't take away from just what a cool moment it was for yeah. Trey Mancini and for the Orioles. And, and all those gripe-worthy people have a point of 
wait, so you have all these cameras that are videotaping everything that happens. Right. I got, I got to see a home run in like but three different can't. angles by Diaz. Right. Like three different angles of his home run. But what you is just that? Can't, you just can't go and press the go live button on Masson. I mean, it's got to work just like when we go live on here. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't want to. I don't. I don't really want to waste time on this topic, but right. it's silly. I, it's. I, it makes no sense. Zero yeah. sense. They don't even. It, yeah, it doesn't. It's really weird. Um, I will say, if you go and watch those three angles of Trey Mancini, you know the angle where you see all the pirates clapping. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is. If you look closely, you can see a guy sitting like four rows up, all oh. by himself in a black hat. Oh, I'll have to go back and I, rewatch I got, I got that into clip. The Trey Mancini highlight because I stand out because I'm all by myself. Oh, I'm going to go back and rewatch so, that clip for yeah, you. Yeah, see me there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, obviously the stand innovation and the Pirates clapping, but the Pirates that were on the field and the ones in the dugout clapping, it was that was cool. Yeah. You yeah. rarely see the ones in the field clapping when stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think, and I, you saw other people on, was it, um, Russell Wilson, I think, had a tweet about it. Yes, and and other other athletes were, were tweeting about it, which um, it, it's a testament to you know how big of a deal it is, right, to defeat cancer and come back the next year, yeah. and, and play baseball. Uh, it just it's a big deal, and I'm glad it's getting kind of the and national attention that it deserves. And he probably will. There's no reason to not say just like we Alex Smith was predictable for the NFL. Trey Mancini will win Comeback Player of the Year. Well, at least get that award. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think the, like, I think you have to play a little bit well, right? Like, you, I mean, we have to wait and see. <laughs> Who else is coming back? I, I don't know. I don't know what other comeback stories there are in, in, but, in baseball but again, this year. All he's got to do is make it for the whole year because who overcame cancer and then played a full baseball season? Are you concerned that, like, King Felix is going to go out and win the Cy Young and maybe take the award from him or something? No, because he won't. What's he coming back from? The, the sucking? Right. Yes. Sorry, but going from sucky to Cy Young is not as good as beating cancer. All right. So I don't, I don't think we got to worry about that. But I hope that instead of that, he gets an All Star vote and all that. Um, how much do you think that first pitch was grooved over the plate for him? Yeah, I mean, I, you watch some of these spring training games. It seems like a lot of pitchers are grooving pitches, just trying to throw strikes. The so, pitchers are. They but, were struggling. With- but but yeah, I mean, I, I hope they groove him pitches like that in the regular season. Yeah. But a great story, great fun to see him go out there. Um, the Orioles pitching, I don't know if you got to see the box scores or listen to the radio broadcast from yesterday, but uh, the Orioles pitching sucks. They Tom Eshelman could not even get the ball over the plate. Tom Eshelman struggled so much that they ended the first inning with two outs because his pitch count was so high Yeah, that they just stopped. Yeah, so, that's bad when you have to shut down. I wish they could do that in the regular season, but I don't think they'll, they'll let us off that easy in the regular season. No, no, I don't think so. So that was disappointing. And I was hoping one of the guys out of the pen would at least be okay, and I didn't really see anything to stand out with pitching. So that was frustrating. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I mean, we're gonna. T- I guess we can talk about some of this stuff t- t- today on the show, but these stats, Tom Eshelman having a bad start, like all this stuff means zero to me. Like it affects me nothing. Um, you, 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 you can put zero stock in a bad Tom Eshelman start as much as you can put zero stock in a DJ Stewart first at bat home run. Like it just, it's not, it's not anything. It's, it's just, it's not anything. And so now if Tom Eshelman pitches and every start looks like that, well then I hope he doesn't make the roster and head to Baltimore. Um, but like Tom Eshelman, I mean, we're not talking about John means either here, right? Like we know who Tom Eshelman is at this point. I'm a little surprised at this point. He's still on the roster to, to, to be honest. Um, well, you can't really, yeah. Just cause he pitched the first game doesn't mean he ends up on the roster. Right. Right. I mean, I'm, just, I'm, I'm even, I, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised we even brought him back, but as even a possibility, sure. but, but yeah, I mean the, the pitching wasn't good yesterday. Um, I mean, people. I saw people on Twitter focusing on some good things they saw. I think that's good. You can focus on good yeah. things, I guess. But even the good things, like okay, like you just kind of nod your head and move on. I mean, I think at this point, you're still looking at what well, beards and bellies. At this point, the, you can't take anything away from four innings, right? That these hitters play, or the inning that this pitcher pitches, right? Exactly. In today's game, um, which it was cool, we got to watch on the MLB app. Yep. You, saw, you saw the Rule 5 guy, Wells, 
looked pretty good. Yeah, and I, I, I yeah, well, it's kind of weird to me. I didn't understand and his delivery. Kind of, it felt like he was falling over every pitch. <laughs> it was a lot of them going outside. I don't really like as well. Yeah. I was more in, in, impressed with mm, scroller. Is it scroller? Yeah, I don't uh, know. Yeah, I was more impressed scroller. with that guy because there's not. Too. Unfortunately, there's no um, miles. Per, there's no radar gun, so you couldn't see how fast the pitches were. Mm-hmm. But he was throw. It was like the first batter specifically. I was watching it. You know, head down three zero. Threw a fastball, blew up by him. Three one, threw a, a fastball, blew up by him. So even when they were sitting on fastballs, they seemed to be behind. And he just got in trouble with a little with a, a little bit of his control, which is perfectly understandable because it's his you know first start at major league camp or whatever, his first appearance in major league camp, trying to impress right, to make the team. So it's understandable he's nervous. Hasn't pitched above single A ball, but I mean things you look for in spring training are like velocity for pitchers like v- v- velocity do are they throwing hard and it looks like it looked like that cat what mac it looked like mac was throwing hard so that's yeah. that, that, so that 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 was encouraging even though there was no kind of miles per hour there so it's hard to, to tell that but right. Right. it looked like he was throwing hard and yeah. the curveball looked nice too he just you know um so yeah he was impressive i liked the only pitcher that i thought looked good on sunday is a bad i was happy with a bad's performance okay and well, see he walked a guy. Now, part of it is he came in right after Eshelman, and Eshelman just like took forever at the mound and walked two guys and stuff. So it didn't have to do much for me to be like, oh, a bad, a bad's a little better. Yeah, and honestly, when I'm watching these games, like if, if a bad's pitching, I probably am gonna go do something else because, I mean, even if he makes a team. Here's a guy who's pitching for 50 years. Like you kind of know what you get with a bad. I'm more. I'm sure. looking at the Rule Five guys. I'm looking at yeah, these younger course. players. Like today, I was watching Zach Lothar my first time. Um, watching that growth on TV. I don't I don't think I ever saw him in person at Bowie, but um so yeah. it's it's I'm really kind of interested and curious to watch him pitch and even the at bats like CB Wilkerson's at bat I kind of I might half pay attention. But then when some of these younger players are are totally. playing like using Diaz, like I'm I'm watching him that's, hit. Yeah and Sunday I spent a lot of time watching Ryan Bannon at third base. Ryland Bannon, yeah. Right Ry- sorry Ryland Bannon. Yeah. Because I was on that third base side, and I saw, and it's like that's clearly a kid out there. I want to see if he can hold his own at third base. Yeah, and that's going to be an intriguing thing because personally, I'm kind of um, done with Ruiz. Like I don't know how much Ruiz are starting third baseman right now. I don't know I, if he's our starting third baseman. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't know about him and Ruiz. Ruiz, I you. Ruiz, I, I've you've seen enough of him, and I feel he's kind of weird, right? Because usually, if you see a guy play the past couple of years, almost every day, like you feel like you have a good idea of who this guy is. And Ruiz, I don't even know. Like I can't even decide if he's good defensively or not. I don't know if it's, it means a streaky hitter, but occasionally it looks like he hits for power. But then he'll go on these long streaks where he doesn't hit at all. So Ruiz to me is, I don't know, a bit of a mystery. And so if Ryland Bannon can step in and be a more consistent option at third base, I think, yeah, that's kind of, that's pretty interesting. And it's about, it's about time age wise, prospect wise. He's played at the highest level of, uh, of minors. He's getting a little older now. So Ryland Bannon, this feels like his time um, to fight for that third, third base spot. Yeah. I got to see Ryan Ripken play some first base. Huge. Which was cool to see a Oriole jersey that said Ripken on the back. Yes. Nothing else about it. I think he struck out twice. Yeah, I'm sure so. it's cool for him, too. Yeah, it's unfortunate that his grandmother died yesterday as well. Yeah, that was sad news so. here in Birdland. I mean, the, the Ripken name is synonymous I, with Oriole sports, and that includes, yeah, includes Viv Ripken. So that's, yeah. Yeah, I thought she died years ago, but still sad. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, she was, what was it? What, she was kidnapped what, years ago or something, right? Yeah, how long ago was that? I felt like that was like three years ago, but maybe that was a lot longer right. than that. I think um, it must have been longer. But and that I was the last time she was kidnapped when it was an adult. Is it yeah, that was such a, that's still, I don't know, that's such a, still a weird story to me. Right. I don't really I feel even like know what happened. Even when she returned, they were still trying to figure out what happened. Yeah, it was bizarre. Right. Um, but yeah, that's, that's very sad news for the Ripken family. But it, um, cool opportunity for, for Ryan Ripken, yeah. and you, you hope he makes the best of, best of being in Big yeah. Lane camp. This, he's not going to make the 40-man roster. He's not going to make the team. This but it's a good be, chance for him to showcase his skills. This might be his last chance to have an invite to spring training. Yeah. So. Yep, it very, very well could we'll be. See. I mean, who knows what he could impress in the minors, I guess. But cool, still cool to see him 
in Orioles jersey. Yep. Um, I texted you the picture of uh, Chris Davis and his changed batting stance. So yes. right now we talked about on, uh, I think it was on the last Birdland tonight, we talked about the fact that he looked bulkier in some of the shady beards and bellies pictures that were coming out. And he does look like a bulky player. He looks like your old softball player right now. Mm-hmm. Um, his, so his new batting stance is his legs are a little wider. His bat's lower, more more closer to his shoulder instead of he used to have that high at bat, more of the slugger angle where you're getting more of that swing motion. So he's definitely brought it down to a shorter stride. Um, he struck out and then hit into like hit a ball that was an error. So he got that a scored a, that scored a run. That scored a run. Yes. Yeah, he did score a run. That, yeah, that run does not score without Chris Davis's bat. True. So I don't know and why you're trying to knock the guy. No, he should have gotten an RBI, but the error did not, like, it didn't count as an RBI because of the error. But right. it would have been an RBI if the guy would have just made the out. So who knows? We'll see what Chris Davis can do. He said you'll notice a difference. Yes, he looks like a different player. I, the problem see, is, can he go on the field? I disagree. I disagree. I think if you just turn on the game and you turn on Chris Davis's bat, I don't think you would tell a difference. Now, if you want to stop there and think about it, analyze it, you could notice those things like the raised bat and stuff and a little bit wider stance. But I'm sorry. If you just like are just popping on and turn on Chris Davis, your You're first saying, thought isn't going to be, oh, Chris Davis is trying something no, new with a new stance. Of course it, not. It looks close to the previous stance. Minor adjustments. The but bat's nothing lower, major. The legs are a little wider. Yes, minor but, adjustments. But every, what do you think he's going to do and move to the Mickey Tettleton super tight? Every adjustment's going to be minor. Is it though? Who when Jim it? Palmer, when Jim Palmer called him out for making no adjustments, the next day he came out with a big old adjustment. Yeah, and that didn't work. I don't know. Who cares? Let's just see. You think you think work. Chris Davis's swing just needs a little minor tweak? Uh, yeah. I think he's a professional ball player. No, I don't know nonsense. If it's a my, I don't know. I think what he needs. I think it's a mental game with him. If Josh, if you were if you were um, Chris Davis's psychiatrist and he came to see you, um, what advice would you give Chris Davis to get out of this Toros hit the slump? Ooh, that's an interesting idea. I wonder. Have you ever seen the the not a therapist, but um, a hypnotist? You know how you can hypnotize people to like stop smoking? Have you seen yeah, that? Or, yeah, or to uh, recall their abduction experiences. Right, sure. or to buck like a chicken. Sure. Yeah. But maybe Chris Davis should see a hypnotist to help him stop seeing that, that uh, called strike three. I mean, hey, at least it was a swing and strike. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I like Chris Davis as a person, so I always try to give him the benefit. Yeah, I don't know. I think if if I'm if I'm there, if I'm the psychiatrist, I'm saying, dude, you have one of the most, two of the most brilliant minds in sports right now, in Michael Elias and Sigma Maidel. They're doing some amazing things with hidden development, and you have access to them at any time. Well, and that's what that's what they said. Apparently, that happened this off season. Yeah. I don't know. And yeah. And, and, uh, and two off seasons ago, he was spending his summer with the hitting coach in, in Texas, but apparently the hitting coach no, never no, no, went to Texas. Yeah, that, that so, was a yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know, like at least from the quotes I read, I don't think he fully bought into, to my Dell and Elias and the saber match. Like, I don't think he fully kind of has given over. Like, I'm sure like maybe know. he had a meeting with them or something, maybe I, and talked about him, but all right, here's what I'll say. What I liked it's he he got two at bats. One was a strikeout. One was a fly ball. Right again, those at bats mean nothing. Right, we can't really yeah. judge much. No. But I do like that the fly ball. He was going opposite because it meant that he did not hit into the shift. And I really think the shift has killed him over the years. So if he has adjusted his timing a little bit to be able to beat the shift, that's going to slightly help him. But I, I, I think that's nothing new. I think he's always hit the ball opposite field in the air. The problem was on the ground, he tends to pull it. But on the yeah. air, I think sometimes he goes away. But, we'll but yeah, Josh, do you think um, do you think Oriole fans are a little bit too too rough on Chris Davis? I, I don't. Mm, I don't know. I mean, I here's what I think. I think Oriole fans 
that blame Chris Davis for destroying the organization or blame Chris Davis for the Orioles not having Manny Machado or blame Chris Davis for Peter Angelos' decisions are a little rough on Chris Davis. I also think there's a whole lot of people in Baltimore that like Chris Davis the person and apologize for Chris Davis all the time. Oh, really? I don't see those people at all. Like, even when I tweet good things about Chris Davis, I hope it's clear I'm being sarcastic. I really don't mean any of those things. And I think that's how a lot of people mm-hmm. are. Like, when I say this, is gone, he's going to have a bounce back year. I hope no one actually means that when, when they tweet that. I, I think they're being funny. I purposely only sent the picture of Chris David privately and not on Twitter because I didn't want to deal with comments. Yeah, I mean, I guess I think part of the problem is Peter Angelos is out of the picture. Yes. There's no other where you need Orioles fans are unhappy. Yeah, you're unhappy with the direction of this team. You're unhappy that you're not competitive. You're unhappy for a lot of reasons. I'm unhappy as Orioles fans for, for, for a lot of reasons. And who am I supposed to be mad at? Am I supposed to be mad at Ryan Mountcastle? Right. I'm not going to be mad at Trey Mancini. Am I supposed to be mad at these pitchers? Tom Eshelman? I'm not going to be mad at Tom Eshelman. I don't yeah. care about Tom Eshelman. So who am I going to be mad at? And unfortunately... But- Like, that's all the attention, and the attention goes, the negative attention goes nowhere else. And there's no positive attention outside of Trey Mancini. So there's a lot of negative attention, and it kind of all ends up on the doorstep of Chris Davis, which is probably unfair to him. It is. It's unfair, but at the same time, I also think that if Chris Davis performed the way he performed before the contract, after the contract, we might not be in this rebuilding phase. Because I think if you had a bat like that in the lineup, you would be more... Uh, intrigued to build around that. So I think there's a little fairness that way as well. But again, you can't put the pressure of the entire organization on one player. Right, right. And at this point, oh, I mean, the, the past two years, like there is no expectations for Chris Davis. Right. If Chris Davis gets two hits this year, I think he will exceed expectations because everyone expects, ex- expects him to strike out every single time up, right. 75% of the time looking, 25% of the time swinging, but we expect him to strike out every single time. So there's no expectations now for Chris Davis. Right. Of course not. Though I don't know, and we're going to talk about this all season. I'm already tired of it. We're going to talk about all season where if the Orioles, the talk is now that it's possible the Orioles carry 14 pitchers, which I didn't 14. know you could do that. 14. You Okay. Because on MLB The Show, it will only let me carry 13, and it says I violated some kind of roster rule when I try to carry 14 guys. So I don't even know if it's legal, but the talk that 14, if you have 14 guys, uh, pitchers, it means you only have 12 position players, uh, which means, you know, if you're starting nine, you only got three bench spots. And how can one of those guys be Chris Davis? And that means you only have two other bench spots to give to a Bannon or a Jones or whoever, whomever else you want to give it to, or DJ Stewart. Uh, so if we go with a lot of uh, 14 pitchers, uh, and maybe we won't, maybe we'll go with 13. I don't think we're going to go with 12. Um, it just, Chris Davis is going to, he's going to, and then that's the thing too, right? Because he's going to continue to be on this team, but he's not going to play every day if he doesn't play well. Hyde won't play him. And so he's yeah. just going to be on the roster, on the bench, while someone else in the minors, maybe using a Diaz, starts hitting home runs. And so now we're going to be sitting at Chris Davis, when we have Eugene Diaz at Norfolk, and it's just going to make everyone so mad <laughs> that we can't watch Eugene Diaz. And it might not be a, a one-to-one correlation, but that's what right. we're going to think. Like, we can't watch Eugene Diaz because Chris Davis is keeping a, a, a roster spot. Do you know what Chris Davis's war is for his career and, and as a Baltimore Oriole? I have 10. It's, 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 it's 14 offensively, 12 overall. Okay. Yeah, Which, that sounds about right. Yeah. Which is higher than you would think because those front first few years were so heavily weighted. Yeah. I mean, and even like a really good year, you're going to be in positive war. A really bad year, like you're going to be zero, maybe negative right. 0.5. So, yeah, I feel like if you have a really high war, it's, it's a little it bit is, hard to go down. It's going to be lot. interesting to see how long Davis is the story. Because well, And it's going to be Davis, all year if there's good players in the minors. Yeah, and, Maybe. And if Davis plays well, then one bad game and everyone's instantly going to say, oh, he lost it. Magic's gone. Well, yeah, and, and, and that's the thing, right? That's, and that's, this is where it gets a little unfortunate. But, I mean, if he has a bad first game, second game. You're done. Oriole fans going to boo him. 
including yeah. this guy. I'm going right. to boo him. Right. <laughs> like, I'm going to boo him. And he deserves – I'm sorry. And I know some some people out there don't like to boo Oriole fans. I right. don't boo, like to boo, boo their players. Team. I am strongly opposed to that. I think these players make a lot of money. And if they suck, they should be booed. It's part of the territory. I would want to be booed if I suck too. There were some softball games where you could boo me out of there, and I would take it because I'm a man. Um, but – or I'm a, I'm a grown-up. It doesn't have to be a man. just a grown-up. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't want to get all Mr. Potato in on you, but uh-huh. it's just a grown-up. Uh, okay. So, so I can handle it. But, but so I think it's okay to boom. And he and he is like one bad game. You're right, Judge. One bad game, and so his start is really important because yes. But like, I don't know. His start's important, but he's going to start bad. Like there's no other way for him to start. I feel like it's going to be bad. And so whatever, hold him to your butts. This is again though. This is also the cool thing about Davis is just so many interesting storylines. The other thing is outside the contract and keeping up a roster spot and will he play is this also is a window into the Mike Elias, Brandon Hyde power is struggle. It? I think so. Cause you cannot tell me that manager Hyde wants Davis on his team. There's okay. no way you can tell me that. Oh, I see what you're saying. I got you. So the longer Hyde is there, I mean, the longer Davis is there, right. it's just Elias. Well, I think, and maybe Angelos is, well, that definitely is part of, Letting Putt and Trey at first base, yes, on Sunday. It's let's see if let's get Trey comfortable playing first base. Yeah, it because seems we like we don't want to put Davis at first base. We'd rather have Trey there. It seems like that's going to be the deal. Ryan Mancuso on left and Trey yeah. at first, right? Yeah. Now, first play hit the Trey, a grounder. He went to throw it to second base for a double play and threw an threw an error. And first hit to Ryan Mountcastle. I think it was the first. Maybe it wasn't the oh, first. He hit. Lost in, but he lost today. He lost, he, in the sun. he lost in the sun. Hey, that Florida sun's high. Yeah. And then and again, it means nothing to me. I thought Ryan Mountcastle played defensively well last year. You know, but what's outrageous is what that, what's outrageous about those plays is it's an easy catch. It's an easy catch, and he loses in the sun. Right. But it goes as a double because like his glove never touched it. Yeah, I know. Those are weird it's, scoring it's plays. Baseball stats. Um, because it's really all subjective. What's an error and what's not umpires. were having a tough time on, on Sunday as well, though. There was, well, they, they always have a tough time. Yeah. Multiple confusion, mo- confusion, like moments and plays for the mm-hmm. game on Sunday. I it was trending on Twitter where one announcer, I forget whoever was at Angel Hernandez, whatever game he was umping. And the announcer said, after after a, a strike was called a ball, well, and Andrew Hernandez is in midseason form. <laughs> yeah, so definitely. Even saw, the announcers getting onto the umps. Yeah, that was I saw that with Davis. There was a real high pitch, like shoulder high, that was called a called a strike, and Davis yeah. just looked it's, at the umpire. It's their first game umping two in a while, probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, other the takeaways other from your uh, spring training? Well, the other news is Cedric Mullins, no longer a switch hitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. So, and I, this is has to be the Michael Elias Sigmidel approach of finally someone went to him and said, "Hey, look, you look at your splits. You're 300 on one side of the plate, and you're like 117 on the other side of the plate. Why don't you just stop the other side of the plate and focus on the side that works?" Yeah, I feel like we have that conversation all the time. I feel like what Matt Weeders, we have the conversation a bunch too. Like I feel like the conversation happens a lot when a guy is really good from one side or really bad the other right. side. I uh, guess the yeah. the question becomes then, like so now he's hitting only from the left side, right? I believe. So, when a lefty comes in, and now it's lefty versus lefty, will his batting average be better than one seventeen or whatever it was? I guess we'll find out. I don't know. I think. Well, I think a lot of times the switch hitters, the the habit is they think that's such a great uh, added bonus to them that they focus on the struggle inside to be like, all right, it's an advantage for me to be a switch hitter, so let me work on this without thinking, well, if I just learned to hit a a left-hander from the left side, maybe I'd do better than the 117. Yeah, and and if you're – I think if you're going to choose a side, and it's good that left-handed is good. Like, I think it might have been a different conversation if he was dominant right-handed. Right. But if you're dominant left-handed and that's your good side, well, go with that because – the majority of pitchers you face are going to be left-handed pitchers. I'm sorry, going to be right-handed, right-handed pitch. pitchers, yes. which as a left-handed hitter is your advantage. So, And I think it makes sense for Elias and Sig and Hyde to go to him and say, hey, there's a good chance you're split in center field with Austin Hayes. So focus on the left. Hayes is a right-hander, right? 
He is, but I don't. Yeah. I think that was. I think there's no way they're splitting. You don't think they're splitting? No, they're not splitting. So what are you going to put? Uh, one in center, one in right. Maybe. I mean, I think you Cedric think Mullins not? has the platoon option. I think, like, I I still view Cedric Mullins like the fourth outfielder, right? Defensive replacement. Like, I want Austin right. Hayes to play every day. Yeah. So Cedric Mullins is your guy that can get started. If you, yeah, but you Josh, know. what you just said, oh, yeah, yeah, the opposite. I what you, what you're saying. But what you just said implied that you just start oh, Austin Hayes splits. against lefties. No, no, no. So like no. once every fifth day when you play a lefty, you'll play Austin Hayes. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, so, I'm wrong. Yeah, so I, I think, but no, you're not. It's not just you. I've heard other people say that. But you're right. That doesn't make any sense. Hayes is the guy that yeah is going to be primarily out there. I he guess. had a couple of line hits too. Today. It's more of having that lefty on the bench is a better angle that you got that lefty in the bench that can go in for Santander or whoever else, or Mount Castle, whoever's playing left field. Yeah, and and I and he, I mean it's Mullins is still I think Mullins is great to have on the team for pinch running at the end of the games. Um and then yeah, if you if you had a situation with with I don't know, I'm trying to think who he would pinch hit for as an upgrade when you get that lefty, but if you have a, a righty bullpen arm it's come in and you, and you want and you want some speed on the base, you want someone to put down a bunt. Yeah. That type of And we'll see because the interesting thing about Cedric Mullins is the jury's still out on him. Because remember, he had a great year. He was the heir apparent to uh, to I've Adam never, Jones. We've never seen anyone praised like that, like the handoff from Jones. Yeah. Like, I don't think Ryan Miner didn't get that type of handoff from Cal. Well, you never – like, it was, a, it was a really – it was a crazy rise to stardom for Cedric Mullins. Yes. And then just as quickly, it was like triple A, and then he couldn't even hit triple A. Mm-hmm. So all the way down, back down to double A a couple years ago. Yeah. And so and now got, we're still left to wonder, how, like, how good is Cedric Mullins? Right. He got a little of that buoy magic last year. Yeah. And then – yeah, and then he came back and he looked pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then And then you wonder, Austin Hayes is a question mark too as far as health goes – and you wonder if, like, I don't know, do you want to play Austin Hayes five days a week and not every day? Um, right, right, because of health. Because of, yeah, he's never played a full season yeah. before. Maybe Cedric Mullins becomes the Sunday lineup type guy. Yeah, yeah, and, and maybe even twice a week or something, depending yeah. on how. Like, you can do Austin Hayes in DH every now and then. I, 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 right. I don't know, but but I, I but it's a crowded outfield of two. But I think, yeah, yeah I think a lefty. DH also. It's a crowded DH, yeah. We got, yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be some interesting decisions. Um, I mean, I mean, I was just thinking about this the other day. There's so many players that aren't guaranteed a roster spot, yeah. aren't guaranteed a 26 I, man. There's so many bubble guys on this liked, team right now. It's kind of ridiculous. I thought DJ Stewart looked good. I yeah, another D, bubble guy. I thought Diaz looked good. Yeah, another bubble guy. There's a good chance neither of those guys are on this opening day roster. It's possible. Very possible with Diaz, possible with Stewart, yeah. I mean, who are the guaranteed roster spots? Uh, Freddie Galvez. Yeah, your shortstop. And, um, second base. Who's at second base? Well, even even that, it's uh, it, uh, Yo Sanchez. And I don't know if he's yeah. guaranteed over a guy like Jemai Jones. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Jemai Jones might be able to take that. All right, so Freddie Galvez is guaranteed at short. Trey is guaranteed. Ryan Mountcastle, I think, is guaranteed. Yes. Um, Santander. Santander is guaranteed. And Austin Hayes is guaranteed, I think. Yes. And right. So, all right. So, you yeah, got Austin your outfield set. You've got a first baseman. You've got a third base. You got a first base and third base. You don't have a third base. Oh, no, no. First base and shortstop. Shortstop. Sorry. Yeah. All right. And then your catcher is guaranteed. Both your catchers, I think Severino and Cisco, set. they're yeah. set. They're the only guys on our 40 man. Right. The only spot there's yeah. really not a position battle is catcher. Yeah. Everywhere else, you've got multiple options. Yep. And short, I would say shortstop is set too. Probably so, yes. Yeah. I think if anything, some of the guys vibe in for shortstop, you might look at for third base or second base. Yeah, like like you might see if a guy can spell Freddie Gal- Galvis and play a shortstop occasionally, and mm-hmm. also you know play third or second. Right, right. Where you're not fighting for that shortstop position, you're fighting for that infield utility guy. Especially if we're carrying 14 pitchers, like you're saying, which then leaves you with what two bench guys, an infield guy, and an outfield guy. Well, I'm saying if you're talking about a six man rotation, yeah, then then maybe starting to come say I don't know. Like I just think it's 
Yeah, I don't know. I be. I mean, On even the with the thirteen man rotation, enough, where do you yeah. put all the guys? Well, if it's a six man rotation, a lot of those guys can hang out in the dugout. Yeah, and with COVID, they're probably hanging out like in the locker room watching on TV. Yeah, that's probably true too. So. Josh, were there any? I was also just laughing because there were a handful of players that I watched like yesterday and today, or like I saw their name in the box score from yesterday and watched today. That names I had never heard these names before. Were there any guys you like? I've never heard that name before in my life. There's oh, yeah. a couple guys for me. Yeah, on both days. I'm uh, just pulling up. There was definitely definitely some pitchers um, yesterday that I was like, who? Like handhold. Who's handhold? Yeah, I don't know. All right, who's Matson? Oh no, you know Matson. Matson came in the Dylan Bundy trade. All right, who's Diplin? Yeah, Diplin was another guy. I don't know. I've heard of Green and I've heard of Watkins. So it's all right with them. Who is uh, Mayhaz Breen? Yeah, that's another guy that I marked. Yeah, Seth Seth Mayhaz Breen. Apparently a veteran. Like, I had to look him up. He's 29 years old. He's played for Cincinnati and Seattle and San Diego. Uh, Last year, he played 12 games with San Diego. But yeah, I'd never heard of the guy. Those were all the ga- those were all the guys on Sunday that I was like, "What? Who are these guys?" The other guy, I don't remember. This was today. I guess it was today. I saw him, Nick Siofo or something. Nick Siofo, the uh, catcher. Okay, yeah. I'd never heard of him. He was today, the only I, other guy. Today, I also had never heard of Jordan Westberg. You never heard Jordan Westberg? No. Should I have? Am I an idiot that I didn't know who Jordan Westberg was? Only he came out in was it last year's draft or two year drafts ago? Shortstop. Um, I think like second round guy. He he was drafted in a recent draft. That's the only reason why I know. Okay. All right. What about Brett Cumberland? Yeah, Brett Cumberland's been with the organization for. I know a couple he's years. an old guy, but yeah, yeah, he's been with the organization a few years. All right. But yeah, that's all. I mean, but, it's always that's always the fun part of spring training. It, yeah, you get into these late inning games, all the eighty nines and ninety number right. come in. And you're like, but yeah, like Ryan Ripken, his number is ninety nine. Yeah. Now. I don't know why the Orioles – I know you don't get to pick your number when you're, like, that low down the totem, but they should have just gave him 88 just for his dad. That would have been cute. It would have been It would have been something. You could yeah. have sold some Ryan Ripken jerseys if you made it 88. Would you buy a Ryan Ripken jersey at 88? No. 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 And if I saw someone wearing one, I'd think it was a misprint. Were they selling any concessions down there? Like, um, did, were the um, merchandise right. store, was that open? Could, could you Every, buy stuff? Uh, yeah. So everything was open. You, uh, they didn't have all the little carts, like Chick-fil-A carts and stuff. Those were all gone. Look at Josh Ganox. That is, all right, we're not talking about the Orioles anymore. Let's talk about the stadium. Oh, no, this is my experience. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. share with you. They had their concession stuff open, um, and they had the store open, but I didn't go in the store because they were doing the, like, controlled number of people in the store. So there was a long line to get into the store the entire game. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so... Whenever I walked past, it was a long line. And they had that spot where they put the – everyone writes in the uh, the lineups, and that place was just congested with everyone wanting to take pictures of the lineups. So apparently right there – Like right there, when you uh, walk in, the big li- lineup cards? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so everyone was there taking pictures. Um, but no, Orioles did a good job. Everything, no physical tickets. You had to have it on your phone and scanned it in. I just thought <laughs> – Thought it was weird that they wouldn't do physical. They wouldn't do paper tickets. You had to have it on your phone. So when you, I went through, and you know how you hold up your phone for the person to scan? Yeah. The guy takes my phone from me and then scans it and then gives it back to me. Oh. And I'm like, wait, so now you're touching every person's phone? How does that help? Yeah. He was, he was wearing a glove, but it's not like he changed the glove between well, taking phones. COVID passing rate is very low on touch surfaces, just FYI. Uh-oh. But – it's very low in Florida also in that sunlight. Yeah, that's I true. I any COVID that got on my arms was killed by the sunburn. That's true. Um, it's true. It's true. Like, all these things are true. And outdoor seating, I mean, I've been reading up on, just going back to school, I've been reading up on some more stuff. Just, you know, how safe it is to go to, go to school. Right. And, like, how how like is it really important wearing masks that kids sit six feet apart indoors? Should I crack a window? Is that Does that make a difference? Like, I've just been reading about all these things. And, like, just, like, outdoors. It's just so incredibly safe outdoors. Um, like, you have to be up in someone's grill for a long period of time outdoors. So, like, it just makes so much sense for baseball to have fans. I just – I'll be really upset if baseball decides – or specifically the Orioles, because I think it might be a city-to-city a city thing, right? 
It so is, if the Orioles decide not to have city, fans, so, and it's not even it's not even the Orioles. Come on, it's the Orioles are a business. The Orioles want fans in there. Yeah, they're already losing a bunch of money. They'd like to make some of it back. Yeah. So is this a Logan, uh, Larry Hogan, or is it a Mayor Scott decision? This is, this is a Mayor Scott decision. Well, that's unfortunate. It'd be better off if it was a, a Governor Hogan decision, as far as All right. I think that goes. And that's your polit- weekly politics section of Section Three Thirty Six. Hey, man. Hey, when if politics get in the way of me seeing K Man seeing an opening day, mm, look out. No, I agree. I am disappointed that Bal- the city of Baltimore has not made a decision yet. I mean, you're talking uh, what a month? Yeah, today's March first, so you're talking a month. Base, they've got to make a decision and announce it so that the Orioles, I'm sure the Orioles are planning for fans to be in there. Yeah. But they got to do that I, so they can figure out and sell the tickets and all that. Yeah. I don't expect them to make an announcement anytime soon, though. Right. I mean, I, 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 was, I was listening to Bus Joel this past week, and he's like, he was speculating that baseball might decide to have expanded playoffs this year again. It's like, how can you? How? How, how did you do that? Well, he, he said last year they made it about a week before the season started. Right. And he's saying he's saying they might come back again and 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 vote for expanded playoffs again since it's a win for owners and players. Yeah, um, but I thought owners were trying to hold that for like bargaining chip. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. Give up that bargaining chip. But I mean, I mean, the the the, the point is like nothing's set in stone, and the way this thing's going, like mm-hmm. people make decisions last minute, and so yeah. I know the Braves are selling tickets and have announced people will be in their stadium. Yeah, the Orioles have yet to do that, but right. hopefully. Hopefully soon. Yeah. So, what is now, after two spring training games, what is the state of the Orioles for this week? The state of the Orioles? The state of the Orioles. Um, well, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess, I mean, it's... It, there's nothing that we saw, I think, that would say the state of the Orioles is down. Um, it's kind of weird, right? Because across baseball, there's still a lot of free agents that are like unsigned. Um, it still strikes me as weird. Like the guy I always think about as kind of representative for all this stuff, but it's not just um, it's not just about him. But um, is um, now I'm blank on his name. The the Cincinnati Reds former Dodge Puig, that that Puig can't find a major league con- contract, still kind of you know just I find kind of shocking. We know he's got one on the table from the Orioles. It's it's a, probably a minor league deal for not much money, but the Orioles have sent stuff out. They've sent them to everyone. Yeah. Um, also, like um, another guy who's not signed, um, Matt Weeters. Oh really? He's not back with the Cardinals. No, he's still the free agent. We could use a catcher. Yeah. Bring him back. Um, so it's just, I don't know. There's, there's I mean, um, Ryan Braun. There's a bunch of veterans. Um, Jackie Bradley Jr., I think, is still unsigned. Uh, yes, you know, Puig, of course, just still unsigned. Nick Barkakis is still unsigned, I believe. Um, so, yeah, okay. just can, can, can we bring in... Matt Wieters and Nick Markakis. Would, would, would you would you support bringing back the, those two guys? I would. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, this year doesn't mean anything. You need placeholders. Those are veterans I, that I would rather have them than than Chris Davis and Tom Eshelman. Can we make that uh, trade? No. Yeah. So it's just so so um, so it's just it's something to it's something to to. I guess overall in baseball, it's just a weird time in baseball, I feel like. Um, but as far as the Orioles go, I think we're we're the same. I don't think at this point it seems like we're set. Like even though there's still some free agent pitchers available still, if we wanted to bring another veteran pitcher, it seems like there's still a bunch of guys left out there. But it seems like the Orioles are – I mean they already have a bunch of pitchers competing for those jobs, so I don't expect them to, to make any other signings. I think they're happy with – the infield depth at this point with Jemai Jones. Um, and and so I, I don't think see them making any moves there. We already talked about how the outfield is already crowded. Um, bullpen wise, you know, I, I I think we have a bunch of intriguing arms right. in the bullpen. I mean, we, we saw Josh Rogers pitch again, which is fun to see him pitch. I thought Evan Phillips looked pretty good. Um, so, 
I think there's a lot of intriguing arms, in the, not to mention the two or five guys. Um, so, yeah, so I think the state of the Orioles is the same. I don't expect the Orioles. I'll be surprised, even though there's available free agents, I would be surprised if the Orioles make any more moves at this point. Um, I think it's just about keeping the guys we have. And, and yeah, I hope, I hope over the course of next week, something I'm watching is I'm watching all these young players. And the other thing I'm watching is, can some of these veterans, like Felix Hernandez, um, and like um, what, what's the, the Dark Knight, Matt Harvey, um, can these guys make a case, like not just on the team because they're there, but can they like warrant a 26-man spot right. and like pitch well enough to earn that spot? And uh, That's something and, I'm, I'm curious to see. Right. In this season where it's really not about this season, as fans of baseball, we would love those guys to do well enough to earn a spot because then you'd get the opera. We would love the opportunity to see Matt Harvey and, and uh, Felix pitch as Orioles. That would be fun. as just baseball fans. Yeah. And, and I don't want to see, and what I don't want to see is Zach Lothar out pitch King Felix, but they take King Felix just because right. they don't just want to bring up Zach Lothar. Yeah. No, because then that's just a sad story. Yeah. So I want like King Felix to pitch better than Zach Lothar. And I don't mean, I don't want Zach Lothar to pitch bad. I want them both to, both to pitch re- really well to make it a tough decision on who to bring up. And I want them to choose King Felix if he pitches well. Yeah. So that's, that's another thing I'm looking for. And like, yeah, the rule five guys, these pitchers always pitch. I mean, you, using El Diaz, we said it when we saw him in spring training three, when did we, when did we go to spring training? I feel like we watched uh, him in spring th- training like four years ago or something. Yeah, I think it's been three years, four years since we've gone. But I remember seeing him um, when he first got here from the Dodgers in that Manny Machado trade. And the dude has big arms, big power. Yeah. Um, and I know he had some injury issues and consistency issues. But, man, that guy's got raw power. Former top 100 prospect. Using the ideas is a guy I'm really pumped about. Um, and if he doesn't make the opening day roster – um, he's the guy that, you know, I don't want the Orioles to trade Anthony Santander, but if you're telling me we trade Santander and then we replace Santander with, with Diaz, Diaz yeah. you could start to convince me, okay, maybe it's, I'm okay with a Santander trade. Right. Right. And um, that's one of the ones where you'll say, okay, well, that's not anything special for this year, but long-term that makes sense. Diaz will live up to that. Yeah. 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 And so I'm pumped about him. I don't know how to feel about DJ Stewart. I know he's lost some weight this, this off season. Yep, he seems to be in good that. shape. Um, hit hit the dong. He's um, standing taller in the box. Yeah, but DJ squat. DJ Stewart I always feel like you can't trust this guy because he could go. I saw his stats last year. I couldn't believe it. He hit like one fifty or something. I remember going on a Babe Ruth streak. How are you going on a Babe Ruth streak for two weeks right. and still only bat one fifty? Yeah, that's. But remember, good. he was off to that such that awful start. That's why right. he got off to such a terrible start. Right. So, and this is this sounds like DJ Stewart. I mean, some guys are fighting for roster spots. Sometimes guys are fighting for their careers. And this very much feels like DJ Stewart's fighting for his career right here. He, yeah, because, I mean, this is the year. If he's going to get an invite to the majors, if he's going to get the chance to make his mark, it's got to be this year. Otherwise, right. the young guys are going to catch up. Diaz will be there. Kerstat is right behind it. By the way, if Kurt, well, I don't even know what happened. I know Kurt Kerstat has that. Um, he had something in the offseason. Yes. Um, did we officially... Related to COVID or unofficially related to COVID? Do we know? <laughs> Is that? I believe they have not said it's related to COVID, but it's but like people a kind blood of thinning thing, and people kind of think it's probably connected. It sounds like connected. To, it sounds like a COVID symptom thing. Okay, but Is, they did not say COVID. It's cursed at, and I'm sorry, I should know this, but is he in, is he in spring training? Like, is he going to uh, play in I, spring training games? They said he would be a late entry to spring training, so I do not believe he is in Sarasota yet. Okay. So right. he's probably going to just he was go on, on the, the list to get uh, the Sarasota invite, but he's probably just going to be over to what is it, Twin Parks or what? Twin Lakes, place? yeah. Twin Lakes, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's he's kind of he's he's another guy in the minors. I'm really curious to watch just because right. not a it, guy that was going to make anything this year. No, he's he's next year at the earliest. Yeah, but. and a guy who we're looking to if he impresses in the minors. And Dia and Rushman impresses in the minors. That's when you can get started to get excited for 2022. If those guys force their way into next year's roster. Yeah, I saw a really impressive. I know we keep wrapping up here, but I saw um, a very impressive interview with um, DL Hall on Fangraphs talking about 
you know, his competitive nature and um, his pitching. Um, so I, it just got me even more excited for for him. Yeah. No, I, I think- always thought he was going to be drafted by the Kansas City Royals. And then he was surprised he was drafted by the Orioles. No, I think the future of this Orioles team is strong. So I think the more I see of these young guys, the more I see stuff like Trey Mancini's local uh, recent press conferences and stuff, he comes across as a leader and stuff. And all that is good for when you're building towards this future team. So it's, it's fun that baseball is back. It's fun to have hope for a team and not just who knows. Yeah, yeah, and we didn't. I meant to get into this, but we never got into it. There was that issue with the Mariners GM who was recently fired over comments on, you know, a bunch of different comments. But one of the comments that he got a lot of heat for was saying there was no way he was bringing up any young players because he didn't want to start their service clock. Which, and, which is something that we all know, but what you're not allowed to say it out loud. Yeah, and related to that story is Jared Kalenic, their top prospect. Apparently, as he tells it, if he would have signed a contract in the offseason, he would have started the team with the Mariners. But because he refused to sign their contract they offered him, they said he's going to start in the minors, which that's messed up. Yeah, it's that's directly related to the service time, right? Because if you sign a contract, service time right. no longer matters. Right. But it's saying it's, it's pretty much saying like you're good enough to make the team, but we're, you're not because of service time. And so I think that's added a lot of pressure. Chris Bryant has spoken out about this. A lot of players are speaking out about service time. Mm -hmm. Um, And a guy who appears to be ready for the majors is Adley Rushman. Everyone says this dude's ready for the majors. I wonder how much pressure Michael Elias will feel from other players and the industry to push push him up. I think it's something interesting to watch. Yeah, I don't see that this year. I see all that pressure. It's not about this year. All that pressure is setting up for the CBA negotiations next year. Yeah. And that's what it's all about and how the how they manage that without bringing in a salary cap and what they do. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. So. All right. You got any ball fours this week? Oh, shoot. We're running over. Um, yeah, I got, a, I got a couple of quick ones. Uh, I mean, all but right. we can do it next week. Right. But you, let's, go let's ahead. Do a, you got let's one? do a quick ball four. Segment. All right. Let's do a quick. Go ahead. All right. All right, my first one is I'm trying to find a lot of uh, uh, different podcasts and shows and stuff to stay away from politics. So a new podcast I've been listening to now for probably a month or so, and it's one of my favorite podcasts now, is Two Bears in One Cave. And it's Bert Kreischer and Tom Segura just talking about whatever comes to the top of mind. So I'd say people should check that podcast out if you want a nice distraction from life. All right. Fair enough. Uh, my my ball two. Ball two. It is is the mall. It is the mall. Are they, wait, do malls still exist? They, Josh. Not only do they still exist, we need to start building more malls. I tell you what, the weather this entire week has been cold and wet. You mean like indoor malls? Yes. They're not open, are they? Yes. Josh, when it's cold and wet, where what can you do with your kids? Nothing. There's right. no, I mean, and especially now with so many indoor places, go, I, I'm taking my kids to the mall. We've been to the mall probably three times what, this past what month. What mall are you going to? We go to Annapolis, Annapolis are, Mall. Are stores open? Yeah, all the stores are open. You okay. got you got to wear a mask, and there's uh, uh, you know number but of people. Ki- we had to wait outside Lego store. But, but the kids, pl- the kids play area isn't open, is it? All those are shut down. But it doesn't okay. matter. My kids, it's like half empty. Like there's no one at the mall. Who who go to the mall? So my kids just run around like crazy around the mall, having a good old time. And you haven't gotten COVID yet. No, there's no one there. No one there. Okay. No. So so the mall needs to come back because there's not enough places to take your kids indoors where they can run around and be crazy. So malls, you guys need to hang in there. I think and, the malls and not are go dying. to business. I'm pretty. Sure I know. Malls are dying, right? Amazon is killing them, and they, they, that can't happen. Amazon and Walmart are trying to kill them. But that can happen, and you know, just online in general, and not leaving your house in general. But we we need to we need to bring the malls back because people with young kids, they need a mall. I, I went there the other day on Sunday. It was it was me and a bunch of old old women who does do does their walking in the morning because we oh, got yeah. there at ten before the stores open. Stores you know are open to eleven. We get there at ten, and all the women yeah. walkers and my kids running around. Yeah, you know, I used to work at the Annapolis Mall. I worked at many stores in for many years. Of the of at Annapolis Mall, me and well, I know I know you worked at Chick Fil A right there. Me, me and the 
well, I worked at Chick Fil A. I worked at the Sunglass Hut. I worked at the Watch oh, yeah. Stand. Me and the uh, boys from Good Charlotte all worked at the Annapolis Mall at the same time together. Oh yeah. And uh, so I got to. Well, know the mall's them. still kicking. I got to know the Morning Walkers crew and all that because yeah. you'd have to be in there for them. Yeah. So yeah, I remember that old uh, old time at the mall. Yeah. My uh, all right, ball three. Have you seen the Mo Gabba bobblehead? I have. That's very you cool. Know, you know I love bobbleheads. And Jeremy Kahn has put together a Mo Gabba bobblehead that he will be selling. A talking bobblehead. Oh, yeah. It's a talking bobblehead. It's got the yeah. nice button. With uh, Mo Gabba's to, voice. Yeah, and his laugh. Right, like yeah. I've got a Chuck Thompson bobblehead that talks. Ain't the beer cold. Sure. And it's, yeah, it's very similar. So the Mo I Gabba, get a blippy. Right. And That's he tough. hasn't. He said that he's selling it. But I don't think he, it's not, hasn't been listed yet. But obviously, all the money is going to John Hopkins or cancer research or something. So definitely make sure you're looking online for Jeremy Kahn and the Mo Gabba bobblehead. That's, that's a hot ticket. Good luck in your hands on one of those babies. Oh, I'm ordering one as soon as he puts it out. I, I, well, I'm not, but I think it's going to sell out quick. It will. He's going to sell. I don't know how many he's making, but they it will. It doesn't matter. He's going to sell them out. Yeah, he's going to sell them all. Yep. Yeah. All right. My, my ball four again. Where do you take kids? Josh, seriously, COVID days, cold, rainy, all week. Where do you take kids? Uh, well, you already told me. You take them to the mall. Yep. And then the mall is too far away for to go to Annapolis all the time. So today I took them, and we, we go here once or twice a week. DMV? No, the um, though sometimes we hit up the dollar store a lot, which I guess we hit up the dollar store a lot, okay. too. Chick-fil- Chick-fil-A, they have the play place open? No, play, you can't even go inside Chick Fil A here. You can't even go inside and, and eat and order food. It's what? just drive through. Oh, okay. No, but so there's not that many restaurants and stuff open. Um, but but we go to there's a local coffee shop. Um, sh- shout out to Dessert First here on the uh, on Ken Island, um, and they sell ice cream and lattes. And so today, and we've been doing here a lot. I'll get my latte, hang out. The kids will get their ice cream and run around this little coffee shop. Um, it's one of the few open places. So shout out for local coffee shops as well. <laughs> All right. Coffee shops. Good thing. I, I prefer the Dunkin' Donuts. Again, a Dunkin' Donuts I, is not open inside. Oh, okay. I don't have – well, I have Camden, but I don't ha- take little kids. I hit the Dunkin' Donuts drive through each morning is what I should say. Okay. That, so, yeah. That's fair. I'm more – see, Dunkin', I, I'm, I've, been, I've tried a latte from there. I love a vanilla latte. That's my go-to drink. And Dunkin' makes a good coffee – but their vanilla latte, and I'm sure a good tea for you, Josh, but the vanilla lattes are very subpar there. They're not very hot, and they're not good, so I don't go there for my lattes. Uh, okay. Well, you are correct. I am a tea guy, and that's what I get at Dunkin'. I know. A unsweet tea and two apple fritters probably three mornings a week at the Dunkin'. Enough that I went through the drive through and they knew my order before I opened my mouth. You got the app? You bet you get a bunch of free stuff in there on the app, right? No, that's a good point. I don't have the app. You don't have the app? I don't have the app. I'll oh my gosh! Even I have a Dunkin' Donuts that, app. That is a uh, that is something that I should. check I get out. A, like a free coffee every Monday. Shoot! All right, I gotta check out the app. Yeah, get the yeah. app. All right, boys and girls. Yeah, that's my ball five. The Dunkin' Donut app. That's a good app. Good deals on there. All right, boys and girls. Thanks for listening. Here, Judge Breakdown. The spring training. Break down the Orioles squad. We'll be watching when we can. We'll be watching all the spring training games that we're allowed to watch. Bunch of dictators not letting them watch all our baseball games. Free the birds. Um, and we'll be here every week to break it down. You can follow us. Like us on Facebook. Give us five stars. Join your fellow coconuts. Go to Section 336 Patreon to support us. There's a support button at the top where you can support us uh, with a little $3.36 a month. There's some more expensive options if you really want to send all your money to us. But we would appreciate the $3.36 if you can spare that so we can keep this thing commercial free. Yeah, and a shout-out to Birdland Sports. You yeah. can find us uh, after every Orioles home game, once uh, after every Orioles game, once the regular season starts for and, our post-game coverage. We've been having some good preseason just weekly topics on Wednesdays, Thursday nights, just talking about Orioles. And it had some great conversations with about six different guys. So make sure you're checking out Birdland Sports on all your sites and subscribe and give five stars to the Birdland Tonight podcast. That's right. 
You can follow me on Twitter at Section336. You can follow Josh on Twitter at Josh Soroka. Thanks for listening, boys and girls. And as always, go O's.